Hey everyone, Shaper 1000 here. We're back on the Toyota again. We're going to try to get that head off of here today. Um, I'm just working slow on this thing, you know, just doing a little bit at a time. I've got a valve spring compressor coming in today, so that way we can pull the valves out, put new valves in, lap them in. Um, but right now, let's see if we can get this head off of here. Of course, I'm going to speed you up through that, but um, I'll show you what we've done so far. Okay, sorry about the lighting. Um, so I took the, uh, <clears throat> I had to take the um, tensioner, the timing chain tensioner out. That gave me a little trouble. I had to keep going back and forth. It's over here, and I took the uh, the cam gear out. But yeah, just you know, half a million miles. It's so hopefully that's still good. I'll have to do some more checking on that before I put it back together. But um, I got to get that hose off in the back. There's a clamp down there that I think I can just take that off and the head will come off. And then I have to take, I've got to loosen this belt here. I've got to take this, there's a little bolt here. I've got to take it off so I can move this out of the way. I've got to loosen this, take the belt off, and then I can get to this pump. And I can pump off. There's a bolt that goes through right through here through these holes you take that out and um, then you can get to the uh, to the bracket I'm not sure if the brackets got to come off yet but yeah either way um, that's what we're looking at so I'm gonna put you in the stand let's get started Okay guys, I got all the head bolts broke loose. We're gonna take them out next and then the head should be ready to pop off. I see some leakage down there so that's telling me the head is loosening up or did loosen up a little bit. <coughs> got my valve spring compressor here. We're not gonna get into that today because there's 16 valves. Like I said, this is kind of a project. Um, but. You guys probably saw me using it using this and a big old wrench to break these loose because I could not find 12 point half inch drive 14 millimeter socket so I had to use that 3 8 drive it held it popped off a couple times but it didn't break and I looked in the truck to get it to get a 12 millimeter out of there and Sure enough, there's my 14 millimeter, 12 point, half inch drive socket. <laughs> I could have been using my big breaker bar on it, but that's all right. So all we gotta do is pull them up out. So I'll get you back down here. We'll pull them out, and then we'll get ready to pull the head up out of there. Um, it's gonna be heavy. I know it's aluminum, but that's a big block of aluminum, so 
Uh, now's when I can use a good cherry picker, but I don't have a place to put one. If I had a place to put one, I would buy one in a second, roll it off into the corner, and when I needed it for something like this, I could have it. But uh, there's, you know, I'm not going to go rent one and just for this thing. You know what I mean? Uh, I just don't have the room in the garage. Maybe someday I'll find some room for it in there. I doubt it because they do take up a lot of room. But anyway, guys, so let's get these bolts out of here and see if we can get this head broke loose. Lift it up out of there. That should be a treat. Well, that was easier than I thought. That's good. All right, I gotta set a table up so I can lift this off and bring it over and set it on the table. And then we'll lift it off together. All right, now we'll take a look down inside. I gotta get some paper towel and clean out the uh, cylinders because, of course, all the you know, a bunch of antifreeze sorry, a bunch of antifreeze ran down in it. But then we'll flip the head over to where what I think is the issue. Well, I know one issue. Uh, let me get some uh, paper towel first. And get my hands cleaned off. I don't know what you can see in there. Yeah, see there's... That just got in there. That wasn't, you know, from before. It's when I pulled the head off. That's what went in there, so... All right, let me get that cleaned out. We'll take a good look at the pistons. Then we're gonna flip this head over and check it out together. See if we got burnt valves or, damn. See if we got burnt valves or bent valves or whatever. Uh, sometimes you can't tell until you take the valve out once you take the valve out and then you just roll it on something really flat, a table, whatever. And if it does this thing, it's bent. I'll be right back. guys so this is amazing now up here on the top of the cylinders right around here you can see that dark spot there's usually a lip there there is no lip there I mean other than this carbon you know that's built up there but there is no lip on any of them that is amazing this thing really does have a half a million miles on it guys 530 some thousand I think half a million uh, I don't see you know I'll have to move the pistons I'll have to turn it move the pistons up and down first I want to clean all that out so nothing scratches it and uh, 
I'll have to see if there's any re um, I see a little bit right there I don't know if you guys can see it right there maybe there is a little movement in that piston now there's a little movement in all of them oh, no, this one's not so bad I see some scoring right there but it doesn't catch my finger so I think it'd be all right what I really want to do because I think I think I can pull that pan off the oil pan off with this still in it and what I'd really like to do is put new piston and rings in it hone them cylinders out I can still hone this just put that piston all the way to the bottom run my cylinder hone down in there and clean that up I may do that but let me get you on the stand. Well, here, let's flip this over and see what we can see. Here's the head. Here's the valves. Okay. Stuff's coming out, that's all right. I'm not seeing any crack. I thought I'd see a cracked valve. I mean, I got them. I'm putting them in, but because it did have one cylinder that was, I know it was slow on compression. I took that plug out. So this is the broken one. I don't know if you can see down in there. Yeah, there's the broken one. So what I'm gonna have to do. I think what I'll probably do is I'll cut this electrode off here and then just drill that that way I can get a straight because I can't put this up in my press so I'll just you know drill it as straight as I can get it to get that what's left that plug out of there and as you can see it wasn't all the way down in see like this one it's even there this one was not all the way down in um, could have been losing compression there I'm not sure but okay let me take a look at this see what's going on uh, it definitely had it definitely was losing compression on a cylinder and then I'll have to get this head cleaned off <coughs> excuse me and I'll have to run a straight edge across and make sure it's not warped so hang on guys and I'll be back with you okay guys I decided I'm gonna go ahead and pull these valves out I'll show you how to do one and then uh, I'll just go ahead and pull them out I don't have to keep these in order because I'm putting new ones in but we'll start with this one here see that little gap right there there's that's two pieces see there's a gap on each side those are called keepers and they're at a wedge and I'll show you what we got to do this is a spring in here what we have to do is compress that spring so we can get these out and that's what this tool here is for it will go on here and we get the the adapters we need and one end will hold the valve from coming out this way and the other end will press that in and then through here this is I think the one we're going to use yeah then when that presses in you can get in between here in between there to get those keepers out with a little magnet so let me get this set up and um, I'll show you how to take that valve out of there okay guys so I got my compressor on here and I got the other end on the head of the valve this end on the spring and there it is now we're going to get our little keepers out do not lose these things and here's the little keepers see it's like a wedge now I'm just going to put these in here right now now we're going to take this back off And it should let the spring be too easy for him to put a couple ball bearings in there so if 
this doesn't fall out all the time. And let's pull this spring out. There's the spring. Don't lose these pieces either. Now, take this off. Let's turn this up. We're gonna take this intake valve out. Sometimes you have to, there we go. Then we're gonna inspect it. The valve looks good, but it doesn't seem like it's seating very well. There's there's not a clean spot around it. But that valve looks good. But it's getting new ones anyway. I'm just looking for burnt valves right now. This is so I'm gonna get these off of here. I'm gonna set these over here. And uh, let's see. Okay, I do see some pitting on the valve seat. Okay, I'll show you that. Let me back you out so I don't. Um, I do see a lot of pitting there. Which I guess a half a million miles, that's to be expected. Right there, that silver part around there. See, there's a lot of pitting. So hopefully, when I lap these valves, whoops, that pitting will come out. See that pitting? That shouldn't be like that. Okay, and then down in there's our valve guide. And it should have valve seals. It should come. I don't know if it comes with the valve guides or not. I'll have to see. But right now, I want I'm gonna at least get these four out and then we'll see what we're looking at. Okay guys, I'm gonna call it a day. I've got all the valves out. And I was looking at these spark plugs, number three and four, and they look good. Really good. And number two I took out and put in the vet and it looked just the same as these two this one I could never tell because you know broke the plug trying to get it out but what are you going to do I mean you got you have to do something you know but from the looks of that it wasn't too bad either uh, there was a lot of carbon on the exhaust side of course you know that's to be expected um, there was one that was kind of bad. Uh, I don't think that one was it. One of them was uh, kind of gunked up pretty bad. So there could have been a piece of carbon. Because if you look down in there, you can see all that carbon build up. Like right there. Like see, these intakes, they're not going to be as bad because they're intake. But if you look at that down in there, yeah, a lot of carbon on the exhaust on the number one cylinder. More than on two, three, and four. See, these aren't too bad. They're carbon, but not bad. But the number one cylinder was really carboned up. So it could have had a piece of carbon stuck under one of the valves. Also, these these intakes, the seats, they are pitted. Now a lot of people are going to say, well that's a lot of carbon, that's a lot of gunk build up. No, really it's not, because remember, this is a half a million mile truck. This head's never been off. And when she got it, it had less than 100,000 miles on it. So when she would go to work, like she would fill up, she may have to stop and get gas while she's out. She can't go to the gas, same gas station all the time. So it was always running, you know, 90% of its life, it was running, you know, uh, at least four-fifths of its life 
it was running different fuels, you know, and um, also this truck, when it was on the highway, it was running between 80, 85, as long as it was on the highway. I know when, when we took it, you know, we took this thing to Gainesville many times, and we took it to Georgia when we went to go spook bridge this thing was running 80 it's registered for 110 this thing was running 80 85 miles an hour on the highway and you know i mean she was on a schedule a tight schedule and she she didn't let any grass grow underneath it that's for sure this thing was always running hard so you know say what you want to you know about all this all this carbon and you know the gunk and stuff like that say what you want to about it but for half a million miles i i've tore down engines with 120,000 miles that looked 10 times worse than this than this engine uh and that's no joke we're talking v8s and v6s four cylinders you know 110 120,000 <coughs> excuse me and i mean they looked you know a lot a lot worse than that all that sludge and stuff i mean you know sometimes she would say i gotta stop and get a quarter oil for the truck tomorrow I'm like you check it no but it's ticking so whenever it starts ticking it needs oil and it didn't leak any and it didn't smoke it just you know i mean between oil changes this thing would go 50 60 000 miles and she would put that on it you know in a few months <laughs> So, yeah. Anyway, I got somebody stopping here. I'll be back with you. Yeah, some younger boys interested in my Scott Atwater there. <coughs> but, yeah, I mean, since I didn't find any burnt or cracked valves, hopefully it would just been a, a piece of carbon stuck under one of the valves. Because if not... You guys know what I'm thinking. The only thing that I could think of would be a cracked uh, compression ring. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and move on with this as planned. I'm going to see if I can get that out, drilled out, and, and get a repair kit in there. <clears throat> That's not my main concern. I'm going to run a straight edge across and make sure the head's not warped. Um, could there be a crack in it? Yeah, but it wasn't acting like that. You know, the, the the only problem I had was number one cylinder wasn't firing right. And, uh, you know, I think it was because this is the plug that her dad put in and cross-threaded it. You can see it's not all the way where it should be. So, <clears throat> I was like, well, since we, we had the Chevy now, I thought, you know, sooner or later, this is you know it's going to have to be done because it wasn't you know it was only now once you got it up to higher speeds like 60 70 mile an hour that that cylinder would pick up that plug would start firing apparently and it would run fine down the highway but taking off you know it was real jerky and idling <clears throat> uh, when i would pull the coil off and on it wouldn't do nothing these was all firing this one wasn't and i swapped the coils over and so I knew it wasn't the coil. It wasn't a, you know, the coil itself was sparking, I should say. Um, but it didn't make a difference on this. Now, when I would rev it up to like 2,500 RPM and then pull the coil off, you could tell a difference. It would pick up. Uh, so it wasn't acting like a cracked head. Um, this being this aluminum, this aluminum head, it would have to be pressure tested. Now, if you got a cast iron head, you know like the old v8s or whatever if you got a cast iron head then you can have them uh magna magna flux and uh they put mag you know they clean it all up and everything hook it up to an electromagnet and they would spread this uh particle stuff on it real real fine metallic stuff and it would go into the crack and you could actually see the crack form you couldn't see it with your eye you wipe it off you could not see it but you could see it with that stuff on it. You can't do this because, of course, it's aluminum. You would have to have this pressure tested. So what I'm going to do is move on with this. <coughs> excuse me. 
go ahead and move forward with this then I'm gonna put it all back together I'm gonna torque it down I'm not gonna put it all back together but I'm gonna put the cams in and everything and that's all I'm gonna do I'm gonna you know after it's all cleaned up and all the valves and everything's done then I will go ahead and torque that down on here and um, Uh, and then I'm, I'll run a compression test on it and then if I still got a low compression on one cylinder then I'll know it's a ring if I don't if it's all got good compression then I know I'll be you know I'll be able to just go ahead and throw it all back together um, but that's what I'm gonna do but so I'll bring you guys along with me on that but I'm done for today as you can see I got a, a lot of stuff to pick up here and um, I'm gonna Put these pistons up to the top as far as they'll go see these uh, number one and number four is down lower than two and three but i'll bring two and three clear up to the top and then i'm going to shoot it down with oil and this is going to go inside the truck um i didn't have to keep these in order since i'm replacing them but it's just a habit these are all in order here um which is not really going to make that much of a difference on them. So, but once once I get the valves lapped, then yes, once once like this intake valve on number one is lapped in, then yeah, you you want to keep that because now it's lapped into this one and not this one. You know what I mean? So hopefully I can get them cleaned up. We'll just have to see. But that's where we're at right now. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Uh doctor's appointment tomorrow uh, I do have a couple videos I, I have to make and get out so uh, I'll do them when I get back from the doctor so this this may have to sit for a little bit I gotta get some valve grinding compound um, so but I'll bring you back onto that I think it's what part two part three I don't know part two we'll go, I don't know anyway it'll be on the title thanks for watching guys I appreciate it Shea Bear the myth the man the legend I'm gone for now We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye, guys. Take care.